haunted gym? I do not know what to think anymore. This is the first of many stories about strange experiences at my gymnastics facility. I can and will post more, so keep watching. Note. Names have been changed and I refer to myself as Op in dialogue. Now, I know what you're thinking, Op, a haunted gym? Come on, this is supposed to be non-fiction. Believe me, I would have thought I was crazy reading this too. I've always been a skeptic, but this really changed me. I'm the person who loves science and can always find a logical explanation for something, even when it's a huge stretch, but no, I'm not joking, these experiences changed me and my team forever, you believe I'm not crazy yet? Well, that's good, I can finally tell you my story. I've been doing gymnastics for about 9 years at this point, and I'm competing level 8 this year, but this story begins about a year and a half ago, in November of 2017, competition season was rapidly approaching, and plans were being made to move our gym across town before the month was out. So we were working harder than usual in the gym, our team was burning out, and we really needed to remember why we love the sport so much, my floor coaches, Gabby and Maya, sat us all down one day to have a team chat, Brooke, Abby, Sydney, Emma, Charlie, Elena. And I sat in our usual semicircle at their feet, I can tell you're losing it, I am too, so I propose a break, after Friday's practice, we'll have another sleepover, this may be our last chance in this gym. Everyone, of course, loved Gabby's proposal, all of our past sleepovers had been some of the funnest experiences at the gym, and they had really brought us closer, this one was to be no exception, my teammates all agreed to bring drinks, games, and of course, food. We're going to make this the best sleepover ever!" exclaimed Emma. The day arrives, and we're all itching to get practice over with so we can party. We listen to Charlie's new song, titled I Got Two Boopsicles, it was ridiculous, but we loved her songs and her strange twisted 11-year-old brain. It was an average practice filled with laughs in between exercise after exercise, the time finally came for us to stay, first on the agenda. Wiffle Ball. We split into teams and play our hearts out, as I'm up to bat, I swing and hit. I throw my bat aside, I hear a scream, Brooke is on the ground, hands over her face, looking like she had just seen a ghost, she took her hands away, and her right eye was bright red, op you idiot. She shouted, almost giggling, all I saw was the bat coming at my eye, and then pain. I had hit her with my flying bat. Wiffle ball was almost over after that, and with the collegiate softball talents of Gabby and the pure stubbornness of Sydney and myself, we had managed to squeeze in a victory. Next up was just some dancing and our annual ugly dance-off. We all spread out across the floor in front of the tall, vast mirrors we used to practice our routines, that was cut short, because soon after the music had started playing, Elena noticed something was wrong, guys. Guys. She shouted until one of us decided that maybe what she had to say was more important than doing the worm, we shut off the music and turned on the lights. What the hell do you want, Elena? We all questioned. Those haven't been there, have they? No one did that, how could we never have noticed? She asked, her voice slightly shaking. All of us confused, we stared at her like she was crazy, we thought maybe she was crazy until she slowly raised her hand, pointing to the top of the mirror, there they were. Long, thin, white handprints all across the top of the mirror, there were some very large claw-like ones, upside down. Twisted, all over the place, some of them were tiny, almost as if a baby had crawled across the mirror, they too were twisted, upside down, and in no special pattern, it was like I could feel the hands clawing up and down my back, and the chills sent me to the ground, we were all floored. Staring in horror and awe. Did one of you pull that? Come on, don't scare us, this is total bullshit, I said, I knew in my heart it wasn't any of them, but my skepticism prevented me from believing what I was seeing. None of us did that, op, there's no way anyone could do that without standing on something, Abby had always been like an older sister to me, she was strong and fearless, but now even her voice was high-pitched and quivering with fear. We all sat there almost silently for a few minutes, just processing the image before us, being tweens and teens, each of us took out our phones and snapped a shot of the prince. In a vain attempt to lighten the mood, Emma said, the big ones look like a Sheldon made them. We were too creeped out to fully appreciate the humor, 
but a lighter mood came over us like a blanket. The little ones are definitely a little girl, like the girls in The Shining, Charlie remarked, I dub her Lucy, but that wasn't quite right, Sydney suggested Lucille, and something about that sent a chill up my neck. Lucille, repeated Maya, and I could tell that she too had felt what I had. I can't look at them anymore, let's get rid of them, Brooke suggested, this kind of paranormal activity affected her the most, she had always believed in ghosts, and grew up in an old house with many experiences I had chalked up to coincidence or some other phenomenon. Now I wasn't so sure about that. Gabby and Maya grabbed the cleaning supplies and a couple step letters, and soon the mirrors looked as if no hands had ever touched them, scared, but determined to keep up with the fun of the sleepover, we decided to play Blackie. Hide and go seek, but in the nearly pitch black of the gym at night. The only light coming in was the dim beams of occasional headlights on the road outside streaming through the dusty garage door windows. Rounds went by and my spots were legendary, I've always been great at finding tight spaces in corners no sane person would think to check, the round when it happened was no exception. Let's pause the story real quick, and I'll give you a layout of the gym, when you walk in the front door, there's a lobby, the lobby enters into a seating area, the seating area is next to a small carpeted zone we call the preschool area, in front of both of those is the spring floor. And towards the left side are the vaults, farther to the left is the trampoline and some other mats and storage, the vaults, naturally, have runways that extend all the way to the back of the gym, on the far left past the trampoline area are the parallel bars. Behind the floor on the opposite side of the runway are the bars, and on the far right of the bars are the beams, littered throughout our piles of mats and other drills. Now this may seem fairly arbitrary and frankly a bit confusing now, but I promise you it will all make sense. This is what made the round absolutely spying chilling. Gabby, Maya, and Abby were grouped together to be the seekers, they retreated to the lobby to count as we scrambled in the darkness to find a good spot, I chose to hide in the darkest corner of the preschool area, under a small and colorful beam, and covered up by a thin mat. I made sure I had a peephole, everyone else scattered and hid, and after all the noise of moving mats had died down, I swore I heard a faint noise, I heard it again, but this time it was almost in my ear. My name, omitted for privacy of course the voice says, sounding like a hissing snake, although the seekers were still counting, I felt that I couldn't be loud, even though the voice had sounded so close to me. I thought it was Emma calling out for me from the right edge of the floor just 15 feet away. I whispered back, what? At the lowest volume one could so I though she could hear me, I only whispered once, and there was no response, I never could call out again because at that exact moment the seekers emerged from the lobby into the awaiting darkness. I watched through my people as they went straight to the trampoline area, talking a little bit, but still scared, after all, it was dark, and we never had the best feeling about the gym at night, tonight particularly I had a worse feeling than any other time we had ever slept over. I watched the seekers' figures moving from the trampoline area to the vaults, then slowly walking down the runway, my spying was interrupted by a figure in the corner of my vision, there was at least one human-like shape, slowly making its way across the floor toward the vault runways where Gabby, Maya, and Abby were still sneaking along, I was a little mad that Emma was planning to scare the coaches without me, but insistent to remain hidden, I didn't come out, I hid my face for one second, and as I ducked back into my secret place, I heard a sound. The sound that still sends chills down my spine. It sounded like a herd of animals crawling down the runway at a sprint, the girls had made a plot to scare the coaches without me. I looked out as soon as I heard the noise, and had to cover myself up immediately, then I looked back out, what I saw still haunts me to this day, it wasn't my teammates out there at all, it was nothing, there was no one there, the sound was reverberating throughout the gym. But all I saw when I looked out was the gym as it was, except the runway had a slightly blacker sheen, maybe it was the figures, I hadn't looked long enough to tell. As soon as I was back under the mat, I heard a thud and a set of screams, followed by some sobs of terror, the stampede stopped. The only thing I had left to cling to was my hope of not being found. So I remained in my spot as the coaches and Abby lay at the end of the runway in pure disbelief and terror, they had turned on a flashlight, but no one had left their hiding spot, 
The gym was as it had been, no mats moved or shadowy figures, just a gym. After a minute of me hyperventilating under the mat, I decided it was time to see if what I swear I had seen was real, Gabby, Maya, and Abby were in the exact place they had been minutes before, still in a heap on the runway sobbing, everyone else had come over. Guys, come on. I thought we had a no scaring rule during hide and seek. You remember what happened last time. I said, still doubting what I had definitely seen with my eyes, through all that had happened I was still skeptical, maybe my eyes had been playing tricks on me, and there really had been girls on the runway before. No one did that, ah, I was under a mat by the bars the whole time, Brooke's response really made it seem real. I was beside the trampoline in the dark corner, and I swear to god, your mother, anything you wanted I didn't move, Elena added with a tremor. Sydney who was too scared to talk, just shook her head, sit, and I were behind the parallel bars, we thought it was you and Emma, that's something you do, Charlie said. I had forgotten about Emma being near me, no, it wasn't us, you watched me come out from under the beams, I saw Emma crawl across the floor, I thought it was her. Emma seemed a little angry when I said that, no, I was there, in those mats, the entire time, I swear, I cross my heart I never moved or even spoke, that struck a chord for me. Wait, if you never said anything, then who whispered for me? When I asked this, I knew it wasn't anyone else, they were all well over 50 feet from my spot other than Emma, it couldn't be explained. No one whispered to you, ah, what I don't get is why you kept shouting, you realize you're supposed to hide, right? Brooks said, I had no recollection of shouting anything, just whispering what? In the smallest voice I could muster, even though I swore all I had done was whisper once, all the others confirmed they had heard me repeatedly shout three times, none of this night it made sense, and the night was still young. Let me stop you there for one minute, now, I know I still sound crazy, you'll see, even me, the girl who had always thought everything was concrete and scientific, couldn't possible find an explanation, now back to our regularly scheduled story. We all sat there for another hour, just feeling each other's presence, no one spoke, but we were comforted by the shared warmth, we thought it had hit us before, but after the reflection, reality was really starting to set in, we all went over, in exact detail. What we had been doing at the time of the event, I started, I was over in the far far corner under the beam and mat, doing nothing, I had a peephole, but wasn't looking out. Naturally, we were suspicious of Charlie and Sid since they were the closest, hiding just a few feet from the runway, Charlie claimed that they had stayed hidden behind two exercise balls under the parallel bar set, no one was in any state to lie at this point, so we believed them. Brooke was trapped between one large, fluffy mat and another, I couldn't see anything, then Gabby and Maya collapsed into view, then Abby on top, they were screaming, I couldn't have made it down the runway, and back into this spot in the time it took them to turn on a light, her point. Being quite valid, was accepted easily, all that was left was Elena, and she too hadn't moved and was far enough away for it to have been nearly impossible for her to be the culprit. That noise, the stampede of hands and feet crawling along dense, carpeted foam, I can't get it out of my head, no human, not even all six of us girls hiding could have made the sound, it was a sound like no other, familiar, but so otherworldly, unique, chilling, terrifying. This event is a natural conclusion, right? Wrong, there's more, the night is young, there's so much more it can't fit into just one story, so I'll spare you the details of us playing volleyball on the floor for an hour, but be prepared, as I said, the night was young. After our volleyball tournament, Emma and Sydney collapsed with exhaustion on the trampoline, we took a bathroom break, together for the safety, Abby stayed behind. What time is it? Charlie asked, my mom would kill me if it were after midnight. It's 3.33, I said, 3.33, the devil's hour, of course it had to be 3.33, I'll never forget that time, that was the time we heard a pounding on the door, followed by a shrill screech. Guys. You need to come out here. They're back. They're back. Abby screamed at us through the locked door, we were in a frenzy, and all of us sprinted out of the bathroom like a pack of dogs were chasing us, when we emerged into the gym, we were haunted by the sight before us, she was right. They were back, but they were impossibly different. But, but, but Gabby, you cleaned them off. It was spotless. They were gone. 
Charlie stuttered in disbelief, she was saying what all of us were thinking, they had been gone, but returned, this time in a new blood-curdling pattern. The handprints, those damn handprints, creeping across the mirrors, twisting, clawing, scratching my insides along with the reflective finish of the mirrors, it was like no feeling ever before, I was afraid for my life, but it was a fear of something there was no proof even existed. No one could believe what they were seeing, it was pure terror. There was something about the prints, they weren't just handprints, they were claws, scraping the mirrors, they were twisted upside down and backwards, and at no angle humanly possible, they struck fear in all our hearts. It was Gabby who broke the silence, I know this is crazy, but you have eyes, you saw, and I know for sure you felt the same things we're all feeling, this is real, we need to accept what we're all seeing, we weren't crazy, all this trying to crack it up to coincidence, seeing things. Or simply someone's pranks, and now I really knew it, these things really were unexplainable by nature and humanity, me, the skeptic, believing something is supernatural, the night had really changed me. But the night was still young, after cleaning the mirrors again so we weren't living in the shadow of the prince, we huddled in fluffy blankets and talked, we played cards until 5, and then finally got some sleep, it took a while to actually sleep. We would hear a tiny creak or a pipe go off, and it would nearly send us over the edge, everything is scarier in the night, it takes away our sense of sanity and sight, this night would continue even weeks, months, years after it occurred, but finally we slept, still as the dead. Until the morning sun seeped in those same dusty garage door windows. Saturday morning practice the next day was uneventful, so I decided to hack Emma's phone, Charlie, and I posed for way too many selfies, I scrolled through to find one to send to myself, and dropped her phone onto the concrete below, it had followed us into the light. The terrors of last night came back to me, Emma, seeing her phone on the concrete, rushed over and picked it up, she began to retch, also horrified at the sight on the screen. On her phone had been a photograph of her, asleep on the trampoline, I thought it was Sydney, until I noticed her sleeping body in the back corner of the image, we had been on the floor all night, not one of us had been over to the trampoline, but the worst thing about it, the absolute worst image that I can never get out of my head, was the screen, the image of Emma sleeping and Sydney close by, with the timestamp, November 11, 2017, 3.33 AM. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video hit that like button to support my work. And as always enjoy the fear my dear.